For a little while now, you guys have wanted to see an all used price performance PC. So over the last couple of months, I've been picking up bargains here and there, and today's gonna combine all those bargains to make one kick-ass PC that can play even the latest titles at 1080p. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. This is Brian coming to you guys today with a $175 PC, or if you're in Australia, it was about $230 Australian dollars. Now there are some really good bargains in this PC that makes frame rates at 1080p perfectly playable on even games like PUBG, which is the latest Players Unknown Battlegrounds, and even a game like Dirt 4. But before we get onto the benchmarks, we're gonna build this thing and of course give it a Tech Yes City cleanse. However, before we do that, We'll also check out the prices of the parts and which parts were the best and what made up this build to get such a good deal. So now this is a part where a lot of people ask me how do I get such good performance out of my hardware all the time and this is where overclocking plays a huge role. If all my parts are allowed to be overclocked then you can bet your bottom dollar that the yes man going to be overclocking that and in this case the CPU out of the factory comes at 2.66 gigahertz and I managed to get this thing up to 4.1 gigahertz stable. It did go to 4.2 but it was unstable and even at 4.1 gigahertz the temperatures were really high even for this CPU lineup. They went into the 80 degree mark which on this lineup of CPUs was a little bit dangerous. It's kind of like the maximum range you want to go on this CPU though as opposed to later generations you've got an extra 10 degrees headroom. Now as for the GPU, the overclocks on this thing were really terrible. I could only get an extra 50 megahertz on the core. Though not to say that it's a bad overclock, it's just that this graphics card, the EVGA GTX 770, is aggressively overclocked out of the factory. And then the memory, I could only get an extra 200 megahertz out of the memory too.
So there we have it guys, the benchmarks are in and this PC did a really good job. Dirt 4, high settings, over 60 FPS, CSGO, we're on this latest and greatest map. I was on a boat, I didn't know what I was doing. It's my first time playing the map and the minimums were still over 100 FPS and a lot of times it was going into 200 FPS. Prey, that did pretty well in that game if you want to play that at 1080p high, then this PC can certainly do it. And then on to a next game like Battlefield 1 and this is where some problems occurred because the FPS was okay at 1080p, I mean I had to drop it to medium and it was in like the 70 FPS zone, but the problem was is there's just no one on these servers. I like tried for like a good half an hour to find a game with players in it and I couldn't find anything. So I'm just wondering, is Battlefield 1 dead at the moment? I'm not too sure, so I was a little bit worried, but the FPS is still good in this game if you want to play a bit of single-player Battlefield 1. And then, of course, the last game we took a look at was Players Unknown Battlegrounds. Very popular game at the moment, and this PC did a pretty good job of running it. Not as good as some of the other PCs I have, but for the money, definitely a really damn good job. I was surprised. We're going around 60 FPS on medium settings, and that was with the view distance set to ultra, which is what a lot of people want that view distance setting at. There are some other things with this build. The open air case. Uh, take it how you will, but performance for the dollar here is really good. There was no side panels included with this case, and I personally don't mind, as the deal that I got there was really good. And also the deal on the motherboard, extremely good. And also the deal on that X3450, which you get off AliExpress, is really good too. So it just all came together with a lot of really goods here and there, and it just made one kick-ass gaming machine. The temperatures were really controlled. Obviously, it's like an open-air test bed now, where there's just the airflow from the outside ambient temperature temperatures are cooling this PC down. The GTX 770 did really well too, I was surprised. The cooling on that thing is awesome after you change the thermal paste because the thermal paste did dry up on that GPU. It also dried up on the motherboard's platform chipset hub as well, but I replaced that and what we got was all these clean parts now working in tandem to give one kick-ass experience. So anyway guys, that's about it for today's gaming PC that's all used price performance. If I had to change one thing out, I'd probably spend a little bit more money and get a new hard drive, as I think the old school hard drive was just really slow. It took me a long time to do the benchmarks. It was holding this thing back. Even something like a new 500 gigabyte or even one terabyte hard drive would make a big difference. The worst for the other parts, they just really kicked ass. That 3D Mark Fire Strike score says it all. 10K on the physics, 9K on the GPU. You guys have something to cross-reference it with, with your own rigs as well, with that Fire Strike score. So let me know in the comment section below if you like the build and also what your scores are on Fire Strike. Would love to hear that too. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.